Welcome in. This is the Thursday night edition of the PFF betting podcast. And we have a little bit of a unique spin on our typical Thursday podcast. The one and only Kendall Valenzuela is joining me, uh, subbing in for Kevin Cole. There's a little bit of change up happening behind the scenes with PFF.com. Uh, we will no longer be doing, uh, the Thursday night prop stream on Twitter, unfortunately, but we are going to be giving you essentially the same plays that, uh, Kendall and I would be giving, uh, typically on this podcast here going forward. So that is kind of the tentative plan more details to come in the future but for now that is what we're rolling with your thursday night viking steelers but kendall welcome to the podcast let's Hello. uh maybe give the people a little bit of you know <laughs> background or you know what you enjoy betting on most maybe you know your favorite team or something like that yeah. let's hear a little bit of goodness yeah. about kendall yeah. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you for letting me on your, I feel like I've made it now. I like, this yes. is my peak and I just really, <laughs> you can't go up from here. So I'm going to ride this wave as long as I can. Um, but yeah, Ben, I mean, we've done three, I did the math the other day and we've done 33 streams together for our bets on all the Island games. So Monday night, uh, Thursday night and Sunday night, which is crazy to think about already doing 33 of those. But right. as you know, um, for me, betting wise, my toxic traits are, uh, the quarterback rushing prop with you and anytime <laughs> touchdown scores. So that is what I like to roll with. And it's sometimes really sad and it's sometimes really fun. So yeah, I think we should have a good time. Definitely. Yeah. And I agree with you. I mean, uh, Kevin kind of enjoyed the quarterback rushing props, but not anywhere near the level that, you know, George <laughs> and Kendall and I do. So I think there's going to be uh, quite a bit more discussion on the quarterback rushing props mm -hmm. going forward. Unfortunately, uh, as the time of recording, we don't have any released in the player prop market for this Thursday night matchup, but uh, I digress. I do still think there probably is going to be, you know, a tweet or something sent on Kirk Cousins to go over his rushing yardage prop. Because I do think if it's at 5.5, 6.5, that will probably be both mine and Kendall's favorite play, but we will see. But Kendall, a thousand so, percent, yeah. thousand percent, thousand percent. <laughs> so we got Steelers traveling to Minnesota Vikings mm -hmm. minus three point spread. 43 and a half point total. Do you, have you bet anything um, on the spread or total in this match? Do you like, you know, I one am, side particularly or what? I don't, it's, it's going to be such a weird game, right, Ben? Because like we have these two teams and one of the, the things that these Thursday night games have done like recently is they're throwing interesting encounters and matchups up because like, both of these teams aren't elite and both of these teams really have been weird to watch, especially the Steelers, but both are in the middle kind of really been of a playoff race in their respective conferences. So it's weird because you're coming into this game and these teams do have something to fight for. Um, so, but then you had a weird week last week, like the Steelers looked dead in the water and then they upset Baltimore. And then the Vikings, unfortunately became the first team to lose to the Detroit lions, which should have never happened. No one should have lost to the Detroit lions this year. So right. it's a weird, it's a weird game. I've looked kind of at the total, the points, which you said was 43 and a half. And I think it's just, I, I don't know. It's, it's going to be such an odd game. So I've looked, I've looked at the points and I did. I did some digging into that, but the Steelers, I think have a shot to win this game, which is crazy. But I, th I also think they have a shot because if they do, they're going to run the ball. And I think that's kind of what's going to be the difference here is probably Najee Harris um, because big Ben, you can't rely really on big Ben. He looks like a shell of himself. It's kind of right. sad. I mean, my favorite thing to do is ask Eric about big Ben and hear him talk about him. So, um, Eric I rants. think I know Eric, I, Eric rants and it's funny. So I think for me, I'm kind of looking at the points right now and I'm trying to figure out what's going to go on because you, you mix in also like that suspect offensive line. And it's like no surprise that the Steelers only average 20.3 points per game. Right. So, but the Vikings aren't great on defense though. That's the thing too. Like one thing they do well is pressure the quarterback um, and they rank second in the league in sacks. So it, it's going to be, I think this game is going to come down to a lot more of the defense than what we think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's kind of the direction of the total as well. You know, 43 and a half, obviously one of the lower totals that we have coming up here in week 14. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to go back to that point about the playoffs, right? P using NFL or uh, PFF's NFL power rankings page, uh, Minnesota Vikings have a 20% chance to make the playoffs right now. Pittsburgh has around a 14% chance. So this is kind of each team's last gas mm -hmm. in a certain way. If they do lose, according to our leverage charts, both teams are going to drop below 10%. If they lose here on Thursday night uh, in the playoff pitcher, but the team that wins could probably be, you know, close to the like 30% 
uh, right around that. I think the I think the Vikings would be right around 32% with the win under wow. 10% with the loss. Um, so that is, you know, a last ditch effort. So we could <laughs> see two somewhat desperate teams here uh, trying to pull out all the stops, but I like what you said about the defense. I do think, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Vikings in general were really successful getting pressure on the quarterback uh, have struggled a little bit more with no deal. Neil Hunter, Everson mm-hmm. Griffin hasn't really played either have started to blitz a little bit more. So we'll see if that kind of plays a role with it, but I definitely agree with you. I think Najee Harris is going to be once again, the focal point of the Steelers offense. Yeah. Um, but, but it's tough because you know, the Vikings are pretty banged up, so especially at the skill position. You know, I know Delvin cook is, this is questionable right now. Mm-hmm. Sounds like he's probably, you know, leaning toward not playing and I'm feeling has already been ruled out. So I do yeah. think this is going to be the Justin Jefferson show, but given all, you know, the things that we've talked about already, what do you kind of like uh, maybe from a player props perspective then? Yeah. So I like, I mean, you named kind of two guys that are going to be the focal point and it's going to be Najee Harris and it's going to be Justin Jefferson rest in peace to my fantasy team, because I had Adam feeling Ben and I'm just, I'm just, I'm done. It's, it's over. Right. It was a fun, it was a fun stretch. I started the season six and oh, and I absolutely I haven't won since. Or oh something. my gosh. I barely, I think I've won two games since then because I had Russell Wilson and then it was just a whole thing. So it's, it's been sad. So Adam Thielen, uh, thank you so much for your contribution to my fantasy team. But I do like Najee Harris. And and when I looked, Ben, it was 70 and a half rushing yards. Um, And at the time we're filming this, I think that's where it is right now. So I think a makeshift offensive line and ineffective quarterback play really have led to like kind of tough, tough sledding for Najee Harris. But I do think that they're going to feed him on Thursday night. He has... 779 yards on 3.6 yards per carry this season, um, despite some, some struggles. Um, and I think the Steelers give, you know, give them what they may, they're doing the right thing in my opinion, by continuing to feed him. Uh, Harris has had at least 20, 21 carries in six of his last eight games. So I think, like I said before, if, if the Steelers want to win this game, I don't think, I don't think they're going to rely on big Ben to do it. If they do that, that'll make it far more fun to watch. I'll just throw it out there. Um, But I do, I do think they rely on Najee Harris. I do like his over, like I said, right now it's 70 and a half. Um, But I, I think I'd, I'd feel comfortable even going to 75. 75 okay. and a half. So, so the PFF player prop doesn't show t- uh, value on uh, his rushing yards prop, but okay. one thing that we do show value on that I want to get your thoughts on over 18.5 carries now uh, minus minus one thirteen price, but do show 2.8% value on that. He did go over his carry number last week, hasn't mm-hmm. the two prior weeks, but then uh, he's, been over eight and four over his opening line, seven and four over and and a push over his closing line. So he has been getting more carries than market expectation. Uh, If you were only going to choose one, would you go with his over rushing yards or over carry yards? I guess is the question. Uh, Well, I I want to be a company gal. So (laughs) I think I, I, I think I have to like say like, I feel like I'm in a spa right now where I have to say the carries. You can go against I, it. You can go against I can, it. I can com- comfortably say though, maybe it's both, right? right? I mean, maybe we could see both of those hit. I don't hate 19 and a half carries because like you said, they're coming off the Ravens last week and the Ravens run defense. Like he had, I believe around 70, 71 total yards on 21 carries. Right. So the Minnesota run defense though, like when you compare them, I feel like it's night and day, Ben, like they don't hold a candle to them. So the Vikings, like the Vikings ranked 29th against the run in DVOA. So the 4.7 yards per rush allowed is, is, way up there. So I can see, I can see if it's a feed Najee Harris, let's try and win on the ground because we can't rely on our quarterback. I can see both of them happening. I personally like the over rushing yards because with Najee, he's so explosive that it takes a couple, like couple, three big plays and you you're feeling okay towards halftime. Um, but I, so I would say rushing yards, but I don't hate the carries either. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I maybe agree with that. I think I maybe like the carries a little bit more. I definitely okay. agree with your point about the Vikings run defense. We have yeah. 25th overall in our opponent, just to run defense grades. So they've been one of the worst units in the NFL. So again. Like we talked about, uh, you know, some of the players in their, you know, on their front four, along their defense line are banged up, not going to be playing probably for the rest of the season. They are mm-hmm. healthy at linebacker again, finally, and at safety. Uh, but I still think that maybe is, you know, going to play more of a factor in the passing game than anything yeah. else. So I want to get your thoughts on uh, maybe the Steelers passing attack in some situations. We <sighs> do like uh, Big Ben to go over his pass attempts and completions, which I think is oh kind of gosh. interesting. Maybe we think this game is <laughs> going to play a little bit over, but I'm wondering about you know, more so the skill position players. One guy that okay. I think 
I'm kind of trying to fade here. Pat Fearmuth uh, yeah. on Thursday night, uh, under three and a half reception show some value. It also under three, 6.5 receiving yards. I think his matchup uh, against um, a Vikings coverage unit, that's been really bad on the outside uh, mm-hmm. is probably going to maybe make him a little bit an overlooked option, but is there any, anybody else that you think is either going to have a good game or poor game uh, on the Steelers? Uh receiving unit i will say no, no. I, I honestly <laughs> just want to say no i mean i looked at your uh friar friar Muth, um stat line and i know he's been good for a couple weird anytime touchdown scores this right. year because uh, we i know we've bet that but like with him his under at 36 and a half receiving yards i mean he should go under because like you said because the matchup uh 18th in pff coverage rate as a unit like you said so it's just like i i want to say yes but i'm really relying maybe on Najee Harris. What did, and you said big Ben, I mean, he's over 22 and a half completions and over uh, 35.5 passing attempts. And our model kind of likes both, uh, which is interesting, but we also like the over a little bit. So, okay. Okay. um, So if you like the over, I guess that's interesting because like we talked about this before, it's really going to rely on what we think the defenses are going to bring in store. Right. Because because the only team with more sacks than the Vikings are is the Pittsburgh Steelers and TJ Watt is having like that cr- career. Like he's having an insane uh, year. So I feel like, like cousins is going to have a headache all, all game, but I feel like big Ben is going to do the same and they're really not going to try and rely on him. But that's, I guess if we like the over, then maybe they think maybe, you know, PFF and our power rankings think like, Hey, he's going to go out there, maybe do a couple big plays right around Najee Harris and maybe not try to run Najee Harris into the ground. Right, right, right. I agree with you. Yeah. <sighs> These teams have actually converted uh, pressures to sacks at a really high rate. I'm wondering okay. if that's going to be sustainable or not. The only team uh, outside of these two teams for sacks from a PFF perspective, the Rams. So second and third yeah. best teams from a sack percentage, but pressure rate, wow. uh, it's kind of a little bit different. It is interesting. The Vikings are... 19th uh and pressure rate so far this season okay. uh the Steelers are let's see here 21st so really when they have gotten pressure okay. they've gotten a lot of sacks but mm-hmm. um haven't been great from a pressure perspective so we'll be it'll be interesting how that plays out so Definitely. let's talk about let's talk about the Vikings offense and yes. uh Thielen's out Cal- <sighs> Cook's probably out we haven't seen any you know Alexander Madison props because Cook is still questionable but we do have uh some opportunity with Justin Jefferson our yes. player props tool likes him to go over seven point reception, seven point five receptions at plus one thirteen price. We also like his over receiving yards. Are you okay. getting on board with the oh. uh, the second year wide oh, receiver yeah. here on Thursday night? Yeah, is like what ball out? you know, what is a sophomore slump? Justin <laughs> right. Jefferson literally right. has no clue because he's gone insane again. Rest in peace to my fantasy team because it's Adam Thielen. Justin Jefferson has been that guy this season. Um, He's I think third among all receivers in receiving grade and second in yards and first, you know, in, in, in the QB rating when he's targeted. So he's going insane. And like we said, the flow of this game is going to be so interesting because I also think like the Vikings lost to the Detroit lions. We have to, we have to acknowledge how sad one, how sad that is, how, how sad it was to watch for them. So I think this could be a game. Like we said, both teams have a ton on the line, right? And I think this also could be for them, uh, maybe not a get right game against the Steelers, but a game where they're like, Hey, we figured out that we can't just mess around and, you know, not lose against the Detroit lions, but now we need to beat the Steelers. So I do like, I do like Jefferson's over because with Adam Thielen gone, it's again, just going to be the Justin Jefferson show. I mean, he, he is like with him and Mike Tomlin together. I think that's a matchup that's just going to be explosive tomorrow. And I'm kind of super excited to see it. Right, right, right. I definitely agree with you. I do like Justin Jefferson, both over receptions and receiving yardage. Uh, Our player props tool kind of likes the under for the rest of the guys that have listed player props. So Tyler Conklin under 39.5 receiving yards. I don't necessarily agree with that one, but I do still kind of like KJ Osborne under 42.5 receiving yards. I do think DD Westbrook's going to be involved somewhat. KJ Osborne's guy has only Mm -hmm. gone over his receiving yardage number once this season. So he's one for seven, okay. uh, just kind of struggles in that third receiver set. I don't think him moving into that second, you know, being that number two guy is necessarily going to help him as much as the mm-hmm. market's kind of priced. And I think he's what uh, almost like 16, 17 yards over what he saw uh, yeah. in week 12 against the San Francisco 49ers. Didn't have a prop number last week, but um, so I think he's a guy that you can probably still fade, especially if you think 
uh, Justin Jefferson exceeds uh, the mm-hmm. market expectation. That's one that I I like as well. Any other ones you got? What maybe, about, uh, what about Deontay? Any... What is Deontay Johnson at? Do we have any value on Deontay? We got I Deontay think Johnson carries. over 6.5 receptions. Okay, his, or his uh, receptions. That yeah. is value. That is 7.8% value according to our okay. prop right now. Minus 120 price. I don't uh, we have that. no. We have no play on his receiving yards right now. That's at 80.5. So I like um, his receptions. I think he's hit this like eight of the last nine games or something so, like that. Uh, so he has got over seven of 11 this season. I think he's got okay. Okay. over uh six and three reasons yeah so it's been you know, seven and four pretty good i mean he's okay he has a hot he's obviously the low adoc type of guy exactly um, so he does usually have this you know higher reception number but uh-huh. um, i think i don't i, think I don't hate i don't hate that one especially if we have value on that one that is someone at least um with the social media squad and everything that we've been doing he we've been we've been putting out a ton of, of graphics on him just because he's been explosive enough um and right. like like we said it, it, it can't be if Najee Harris isn't working or if we like the over total for the points, yeah, it's gotta, it's gotta go to someone. Uh, and, and we know it's not going to Pat. <laughs> so right, I kind of, right. I don't, I don't hate that at all. Okay. I like yeah, it. I like I it. Know. I'm getting on board with you. I mean, yes. he's, he's worked for us before and a couple of these prime time yep. games going over his reception total. So I like kind of going back to the well on that one. Uh, okay. What do you got for any time touchdown oh, scores? Let's I'm hit on it. So here, glad you asked, but I only, I only have, um, I, it's been a little rough recently, so I need to like recenter myself rain then and, and really just like rein it in. We can't, can't be going for the play. The last one I, that hit was Lil Jordan Humphreys. And I think that was Lil Jordan Humphrey, which was like the best one of the year. Cause it was like plus eight fifty. So I just need to reel it in a little bit. So I I'm going to go with Najee Harris. And I don't think like that isn't anything crazy, but if you sprinkle it somewhere, like we like to do, um, he he's recorded his sixth game with at least a hundred scrimmage yards. Uh, it's obviously the most among rookies and he scored. Here's, here's the, here's the thing that he scored a touchdown in each of Pittsburgh's three primetime games this season. And I think he's going to do it again because he's electric. He's fun to watch. And I think they're really going to meet him if they, if they want to beat the Vikings. So I like Najee Harris anytime. There we go. I actually, I can get on board with that minus okay. minus 135 price on DraftKings Sportsbook. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a decent play for sure. I, I, I can definitely get on board <laughs> with that one being a pretty easy layup. Uh, exactly. I want to talk about a potential new segment that we were kicking around the idea of, and yes. we want to get, you know, some user feedback, those sorts of things. Cause not only do we want to, you know, maybe help some people grow in their sports betting knowledge, but we'd also like to be a spot where newer, newer betters and those sorts of things can at least start building up that knowledge. One way that we kind of talked about uh, potentially doing that is an odds boost, right? Every yep. site has you know, a number of opportunities, especially on these primetime games uh, where they, you know, make a big marketing push to kind of rein people in on bets that maybe aren't uh, probably as good as they're trying to make it look out to be. So I went through uh, most of the major sites to try and pick You went through a lot. I went through a lot. It is kind of a grind. We'll see if we can keep (laughs) this up or not. Uh, And I try to price out basically um, you know, the opportunities for any of them. So some of them, uh, are kind of easy to do, right. If there's one leg, uh, of a prop and they're kind of just, you know, looking at it as far as like an example, I can say that MGM has an odds boost Vikings mm-hmm. win by one to six points. That's priced at plus three ten. If you went to a site like DraftKings, uh, they just price that it's not an odds boost boost, just a normal thing, plus 280. So, you, you know, mm-hmm. you're not getting a ton of value. Uh, if you're looking at those sorts of things, another example like that would be, you know, KJ Osborne, anytime touchdown score plus 235 on Caesars. That's an odds boost. Uh, but you could go to FanDuel and get that at plus 290. You could go to okay. DraftKings and get that plus 200. So that's probably the type of odds boost you want to avoid. Now in saying that there are occasionally some, you know, based on, you know, some math and calculations parlays that I think are worthwhile. Mm-hmm. And one of those uh, I got to give a shout out to our whole, your, our sponsor DraftKings, but they have nice. Najee Harris to record 100 plus rushing yards at uh, plus 425 price. Uh, PFF projections, we actually have him going over 100 uh, rushing yards 22.15 percent of the time. So we would price that probably closer to plus 350. So you're mm-hmm. getting around three three percent of value, maybe just a little bit more on that Najee Harris to record 100 plus rushing yards. So I think that is kind of I like a, a decent one. spot, especially given the fact that you like him, you know, going over his rushing yards. 
uh, going out for an anytime touchdown. I think maybe yeah. that's the play uh, for some of our listeners here. If you're really excited about Najee Harris, what do you think about that? I like that one. I'm, 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 I almost want to pick up my phone and do it right now. Got it right now. So, you, you can <laughs> wait until after we're done recording. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. No, I do like that one because like, for all the reasons, like just copy and paste all the reasons we talked about before, you can see it happening. If it doesn't, sure, but you can't come into this game and tell us that Najee Harris isn't going to be like a shining star in that game tomorrow because or else they're or else what what are they gonna who are they gonna turn to realistically right. so I like that and I like you know sprinkle the anytime touchdowns maybe first touch first first touchdown score I don't know Ben I right. like it there we I go like I, I, I can get on board with that one the only other <laughs> one that I found that had a little bit of value Caesars has the Vikings to win and Kirk Cousins okay. to go over 299.5 passing yards Vikings winning Ooh. obviously on the money line minus 170 PFF mm -hmm. projects Kirk Cousins to throw for 300 plus uh, yards, 40% of the time. So that'd be right around like a plus 145 price. If you correlated those in uncorrelated parlay, pale plus 287. Caesars is going to give you plus 500. So that one's maybe the wow. odds boost I like quite a bit as well. Yeah. Um, so we're getting almost like 10% value based on that calculation. So if you buy into the fact that PFF projects cousins to have, you know, a decent mm -hmm. 300 plus performance, at least that much, uh, I do think that that is mainly the, maybe the only other, odds boost that I came across that yeah. was probably worthwhile for people to bet. So yeah. Little bounce back game for Kirk. I backs. mean, when you, when he you lose, it. yeah, when you lose to the Detroit lions, like anyone is going to need a bounce that, back game. That is the second time you brought up the Detroit lions last. I was trying to make it through without I'm bringing sorry. it up whatsoever no, as a closet to. Vikings fan, but I know um, you've been, no, you've been pressuring you, you me have into to. it. So, no, you so have we'll to bring see. it up. It was, it was sad. It, it was you just sad. can't, you can't lose to the, you can't lose to the lions. All right. So final thought, final question. It sounds like you're maybe leaning a little bit on the Steelers direction. Are you, are you, do you think that they end up winning this game or what do you think? No, I don't. I don't. I think they keep it close though. I do. Okay. I think they keep it close. I think uh, the Vikings have more on the line in this game. I think after last week's loss, they realized, you know, they need to get it together. I do think though, that the Adam Thielen injury is going to play, play a big part, a bigger part than we know. Yes. Justin Jefferson is amazing. Um, but now they don't have that, you know, two headed kind of monster, uh, especially for Kirk. Um, but I do think they pull it out. I think it is a closer game than expected. The Steelers have played, the Steelers have grinded this season. It's right. been, it's been weird, but they have just, just like the lions. I mean, they have kept it relatively sometimes close, but, but in the last couple of games, it's been like, what is going on? So I do think though, that the Vikings uh, win. I do think it's uh, closer than normal, um, but I do think they pull it out. There we go. All right. I can yeah. get on board with that. I think, I think the Vikings are maybe going to play pretty well here. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of my expectation. So we will see what, the, what Thursday night brings, <laughs> but uh, Kendall, we definitely appreciate you, you know, coming on the PFF betting yeah. podcast. We might have to make it happen more often listeners. If you got any feedback, uh, things you'd like to hear or, you know, suggestions, pff.com is taking all of that right now. So now is the time to make your voice. Sir. We would definitely appreciate it from Ben Brown, joined by Kendall Valenzuela. We appreciate you all listening to the PFF betting podcast.